Hi, how's everybody doing? That was cool, right? Can we hear some more noise for the dancers? I don't think I've ever been anywhere in the world and spoke and there were like dancers on the stage before I went on, so that's pretty great. All right. Before I start, is there any way to get these slides actually in here so I can see these? No? All right, doesn't matter. I'm here to talk to you guys today about why creatives make the best entrepreneurs. How many of you guys identify as creatives? Any of you? By show of hands? How many of you guys identify as entrepreneurs? How many of you guys identify as creative entrepreneurs? Not enough of you. We, we need to change that. So let me tell you a little bit about myself, why I deserve to be up on the stage, why I flew all the way from New York City to speak to you guys today. My name is Mick. That's my son, Miles. He's way cooler than me. He's way cuter than me. I like to start off all my talks with a picture of him because honestly, he's like, he's the way better version of me. I've gotten to do some really cool things because of this creative career that I have. I've gotten to DJ for people like Prince. I've gotten to DJ for people like Michelle Obama. I've been very fortunate to work with a bunch of brands, a lot of them in the creative space, actually. Adidas, Nike, Samsung, Twitter, the NBA. And what's really interesting about that is I started my career as a DJ, as you just saw, but because of the creativity that I threw into my DJ career, I was able to create all these other interesting career paths and entrepreneurial paths, all based off the exact same skill sets that I created my DJ career with. Now, I managed my own DJ career, so that kind of led me to creating a career as a speaker, creating a career as an entrepreneur, creating a career as an angel investor, uh, brand consultant, and all of those things came literally from using the exact same skill set that I created a DJ career with in a dorm room when I was in college way back in the day. Now, I think this quote that really can sum up anything creativity related is a quote that sums up my entire career, which is, creativity is intelligence having fun said by none other than Albert Einstein. And if I can't think of any other line that sums up my whole career, it's that exact quote. Now, the three things we're gonna talk about today while I'm up here, one, we are all creatives. Two, I'm gonna discuss with you some traits of creative entrepreneurs that I think would be you know, a good thing for you guys to take away when you leave this conference. And three, we're gonna discuss some personal branding tips that I think could help everybody as well. Okay, so from the initial poll we did, a lot of you did not identify with being creatives. We're gonna fix that. When I was in college, I was getting an MBA when I was in school, and there was a moment right before I graduated where my teacher actually came up to me. My professor came up to me on one of my last days of grad school, and he said, you're messing up. You're screwing up your whole life. There's no way you can be creative and be business at the exact same time. And I remember looking at him in front of the entire class, and I felt really like stupid that he would single me out in front of that entire audience, right? Because how are you gonna tell somebody in a marketing program that they can't be creative and be successful in business at the exact same time? Now obviously, history has proved his theory wrong. We could look at a bunch of people, and we will, but remember, entrepreneurs are the link between the creative mind and the business mind. Now if you look at somebody like a Steve Jobs, would you consider him a creative? Or would you consider him a business mind? Or would you consider him both? You'd probably consider him both, right? If you look at Richard Branson, the same thing. Obviously a genius businessman, but without his creativity, none of that would have happened for him. And we could even look at somebody like Walt Disney, who obviously was much younger in these pictures than any picture we've ever seen of Walt Disney. But for all the billions he's generated and for all the amazing success he's had in the business world, None of that would have happened without the creativity that inspired him to draw a mouse in the first place. Now, obviously, like I said, that teacher was, was pretty wrong and pretty misinformed. And there was actually a quote that I found when I was researching this talk for you guys that I thought really summed up everything. It was, creativity is actually a bigger predictor of success in life than intelligence. Think about that. Creativity has a better chance of predicting your success in all your entrepreneurial pursuits than your actual intelligence. Our parents never told us that when we were kids. Now, for those of you who are creative entrepreneurs, for those of you who want to have more creativity in your entrepreneurship, let's talk about some traits that creative entrepreneurs display. One, we create new products for existing services and we create new services for existing products. What exactly does that mean? How many of you guys by a show of hand have a startup? 
A decent amount. You can raise your hands a little bit higher. I can't see you in the back. If you have a startup, be proud of that. You're here at an amazing conference for people like you. Okay, so you guys all have startups, right? How many of you realize within five years your startup's going to probably pivot into something else? Do any of you not think that's going to happen? Okay, very, very, very naive. That's absolutely going to happen for at least half of the people in this room. Now, let's look at how creativity and a creative entrepreneur has changed the focus of some of the apps and services that we use consistently, daily, on our phones every day. Now, YouTube, of course, we know it now as a giant video behemoth, but did you know YouTube actually started as a dating app? And when they realized what people were using it for, they creatively repositioned it to be the YouTube that we know and love today. Shopify, their founders were genius. They were super creative. Shopify actually started as a snowboard company, but the thing that was really interesting about what they did was the snowboards didn't do that well, but what they actually really loved about what they created, they created an online shopping platform that actually eclipsed the snowboards by exponential zillions, and now they have a billion dollar company because they were able to take the creativity that originally created snowboards, but created a platform to go along with it. I think one of the best quotes about how you can creatively shift your company comes from Kevin Systrom, the founder of Instagram, and he said, plan A is never the product that entrepreneurs actually end up with. Now, another thing creative entrepreneurs do really, really well, we connect the dots. Most people are afraid of bringing different disciplines together, but us, we live it, we live for it, we love it, we look for those opportunities to take a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of that, put it all together and see ultimately what comes out. Many of your favorite products, the favorite things that you guys use all the time, they didn't come from just one idea. They came from taking the best of this, the best of this, maybe the worst of that and making sure you don't use that, putting it all in a pot together and then you kind of get what your product ultimately is. Now, let's go back to DJing for a second. DJing is a very interesting career, right? Because if you think about it, DJs live that mantra that I just said. Our whole job when we're performing is to literally take a bunch of different disciplines, a bunch of different items, and put it all in a pot. Because when I'm performing and I have a thousand of you people in front of me, you guys don't all like the same things. And it's the same thing with the consumers for your products and your startups. Not all of your consumers are going to like the same thing. How do you appeal to the most amount of people at the same time? And honestly, the secret is by combining different disciplines. So, since I, I don't know the last time I've ever spoken, there was actually turntables on the stage. I want to show you something. So let's say in this audience, probably a thousand people here, probably a thousand people over there, you guys all have different varied musical tastes, right? So just for argument's sake, if I'm playing for you guys, and let's say there's somebody over here that really likes Coldplay. Let's say there's somebody over here that really loves 90s hip hop. And let's say there's somebody over here that really loves Jay-Z. How am I supposed to play for all three of you at the same time? It's a near impossibility, right? But I could do something like this. You can start with that Coldplay, then mix in some of this. And then, and then I could add in some Jay-Z like this. So basically what happens is you're able to appeal to multi-demographics, completely different audiences, completely different ages, races, genders, all by thinking creatively and thinking about what your product is going to be. Steve Jobs would actually made an amazing DJ because he had a quote that sums up basically what every DJ, what every marketer, and what every entrepreneur should do. And he said creativity is simply just connecting things. Now, a creative entrepreneur adheres to rules and principles only when they add value. We disrupt. We change the game. We hack things. How many of you guys consider yourself hackers? Any? All right. How many of your companies have already, uh, already started hacking what you're trying to do for your industries? Are any of you guys really innovating and game changing and doing some really unique things? One company that actually did that really well when they first started was Uber. When Uber first came out, they had almost every single legal restriction in the world against them. 
Oh, you can't pick up at the airport. All right, cool. Well, we'll just pick you up at arrivals then instead of departures. Oh, you can't drop off on this street. Okay, well, we're just going to drop you off on the corner so we can't get a ticket. Oh, you can't do this. Oh, we can't do that. Their whole motto was, we're just going to keep doing everything until you shut us down. And there were some countries that shut them down. But overall, you have to take those risks and you have to take those opportunities and you have to look for those creative loopholes in order to really, 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 really change the game with what it is that you do. Now, the wise 21st century poet Drake had an amazing quote on this exact topic, actually. He said, let's not ask for permission, ask for forgiveness. And that's a quote that I think any creative entrepreneur could take and apply into your life when you're launching your business. And, you know, why, why would you wait? Why would you wait for somebody to tell you you can't do something? If I would have waited for that grad school teacher to tell me I could do this, my career would have never happened. If you're an app, if you're a startup, if you're a company and you're a creative entrepreneur and you're trying to launch something, why are you going to sit there and listen to everybody tell you you can't do it? Don't ask for permission. Ask for forgiveness. Go ahead and do it. We don't take no for an answer. Creative entrepreneurs, we think outside of the box. We think outside of it because honestly, we can. We're built for it, we're wired for it. That's what we're born here to do. That's why you guys have created the companies that you've created. That's why you're in, your, in this room. That's why you came all the way to Hong Kong for this conference. Now, a third lesson that's super, super key as you guys are launching your companies, as you guys are starting your companies, as we're on the path to becoming creative entrepreneurs, you guys have to have very strong personal brands. Now, how many of you guys have personal brands to go along with your, your company's brands? Any of you founders do? One, two. Okay. I'm really glad the rest of you are here. We really need to fix that. That's very, very important. This is not 1980. As your company grows, people are going to be looking to you as the founders for inspiration and energy on how, A, that company is going to grow both internally with your employees and outwardly with their audience. Your company is going to change. Your industry is going to change. The world is going to change. And you need to not only grow your personal brand, but you need to pivot your personal brand just as your company will pivot. And you can actually be smart about this, be creative about this, use some just real interesting tricks and tools to just create the personal brand that you want to have in the future with your company. Now, I'll tell you a little story about how I was able to do this for my career. 10 years ago, all I did was DJ. I had a very blessed DJ career, but my career did not match where my aspirations were. My career did not match what my intelligence was, and my career did not match what my opportunities were. I have no idea what that is over there. But I set a goal five years ago for my personal brand, right? And I said, I want to make sure that my personal brand represents where my career is going. I knew I was going to be doing speaking. I knew I was going to be doing investing. So I said, I want to set my personal brand. I want to figure out how creatively I could solve this problem, right? I want my brand to represent the exact difference between what complex is, meaning culture, sneakers, music, lifestyle, and Fast Company, which is obviously a publication everyone in this here would know. It bridges the gap between entrepreneurship, innovation, and things of that nature. So I did a study. I did a creative study on my own personal brand, and I did a creative study on my competitors' brands and my peers' brands, and here's what I came up with. If we look at an Instagram, of just the basic DJ. And it doesn't have to be DJ, it could be a founder, it could be whatever industry that you guys are in. Most DJ Instagrams look a lot like Tiesto's Instagram. Now, obviously Tiesto has more money than any of us in his room probably put together, so good for him. But for the rest of us, that doesn't happen. So if you look at his Instagram, right, you see just a lot of things that you would predict to happen with a DJ Instagram. Well, you have girls on stages and thongs. You have lots of lasers. You have lots of smoke machines. You have people dressed up like marshmallows. He even has a boat with his name on it. Now that's great. That's awesome. However, for me, that wasn't going to cut it. Having a personal brand like that was not advancing my company, my brand, which is the brand of myself and the other things that I'm doing. So I set out to creatively reinvent who I was in order to accomplish all the entrepreneurial goals that I had for myself. So I created a personal brand that referenced all of the different business interests I had. So you could see everything from obviously me DJing 
to me being a strong person with my family, lots of travel, um, that's speaking at MIT, doing a lot of fashion stuff, and things of that nature. When I set that precedent for what my personal brand would be, my business exploded. All the attributes of my business that were not growing because people were simply perceiving of me as just a DJ dramatically changed. Not overnight, but it happened relatively quickly because people started to perceive exactly what my personal brand was because of how I chose to creatively put it out there. And it's really interesting what happened with that. That was about five years ago when I started to do that. Last year, Inc. Magazine did an article on me and they actually called my personal brand a combination of Questlove and Gary V, which is really interesting because when you sit back and you think about it, what I set the goal for five years ago with Complex and Fast Company, they've essentially identified me with that exact same branding. So I'm here to tell you that a creative personal brand strategy works. A strong personal brand can also help your company establish credibility. Now, as you guys grow your companies and as you grow your personal brands, let's look at some people that do it well, and we'll look at some people who maybe don't do it so well. Obviously, Gary was able to grow Vayner into a zillion dollar behemoth because he lives and breathes the DNA of his company. When you think of what they do and you think of what they're involved in and then you look at who he is and how he represents himself, it's literally a spitting image of what the company is. He is as the company goes. You could also make the same argument with like Jessica Alba. She's about health, she's about wellness, she's about family. Honest Company is like a billion dollar company now because of the things that she represents. She was creatively able to position her brand to represent her company. Another great example of it is Jennifer from Away. As you can see, Brand Week feels the same way about what she's doing. However, for all the people that get it right, there's also a lot of people who get it wrong. This is what we don't want. We don't want to be, for all the good things Uber did, we don't want to be Travis from Uber. We don't want to be on the cover of Fortune saying, I don't think I'm an asshole. If you don't think you're an asshole and a magazine says the word asshole on the front of it, more than likely, you're probably an asshole. And then of course, we have this. You guys remember when this went viral like a month or two ago? It, this is obviously what you're all doing when you're building your companies, right? This is like, is this, this is like Startup 101, right? This is all in your pitch decks. This is what you don't want. And it's really interesting when you look at like the stock of like Tesla and the stock of SpaceX when all this stuff went up, the stock went down. People lost a lot of money because of a very bad branding decision. So we have to be creative, we have to be smart, and we have to be really, really intelligent and mindful of how we approach our personal brands from that perspective. History tends to favor the creative entrepreneurs. Why do you want to be a creative entrepreneur versus just being an entrepreneur? It's a million reasons, but let's think about this. People do not buy goods and services. We all have amazing products. You guys have some of the best things in Asia. That's why you're here. But people want stories. People want magic. People want amazingness. People want to be odd. That's what, like, the basketball thing back there, there's a million basketball things. But how he told that story up here and how you get to experience that when you go over there, that's what creates the magic. Now, if we look at the people I referenced when I first came on stage, let's do a comparison. Steve Jobs created a billion-dollar computer company. Michael Dell created a billion-dollar computer company. Who do we look at? as the icon in the field. They both created companies around the same time and both did extremely, extremely well. I would venture half of you don't even know who Michael Dell is in this room, but all of you guys probably idolize Steve Jobs because he created the magic around the company. He created the magic around his personal brand in order to facilitate that. Same thing with Richard Branson. He was able to create record labels and travel and items that you want to buy because of the magic that was in his, brand, in his brain and the creativity that was in his heart. Jimmy Iovine did the same thing, but people do not regard him in the same way as they regard Richard. Even if you look at Walt Disney, William Hanna created amazing cartoons, amazing animation. He created the Flintstones, he created the Jetsons, all these iconic properties. Nobody knows who he is. If he had William Hanna World, you would not go. You would not bring your kid there. But you would definitely line up and wait three hours for a roller coaster at Walt Disney World. Why? Because he created the magic. He created the brand. He created the things that pull on your heartstrings. He created the story that made you believe in his entrepreneur task. And I want to close with you today 
with a quote that I think really is something we could all take away from this. It's something that I thought about a long time ago, and I was really excited to see it in print from my friend Jason. He's the CEO of Entrepreneur Magazine. He said, entrepreneurship is a life you create, but everything else is a job someone can take away. So I encourage you as you leave this room today, don't just be entrepreneurs. Don't just be businessmen. Be creative. Think. Create the magic. Create the companies that people will want to look forward to, not just for the next couple years, but for the next 100 years and the next 1,000 years. Thank you very much.